drawing money in the wrestling industry has long been the biggest issue for any superstar. Creating that box office star that makes the company either more mainstream, makes them more money, gets their name out there, or turns them in to a huge success. In this day and era in 2016, the stars that we have that have that box office capability just aren't there. And that's what we're going to discuss, drawing money in WWE. Now, in 2016, wrestling has changed. The way we view wrestling, the way we consume wrestling, the way that we perceive wrestling has changed. Back in the day, you would have a guy like Bruno San Martino who would hold the title for years. In this day and age, if a champion such as Roman Reigns, John Cena, or anybody held the title more than a year, sans CM Punk, and we're going to talk why CM Punk actually didn't draw money, fans lose interest. When content such as BuzzFeed, YouTube, Vines, Snapchats reign supreme, the attention span of consumers has changed. When you have a third hour of Monday Night Raw, which oftentimes for the WWE is too long for fans, the WWE is making good money. Right now, they're posting profits of about $25 million to $35 million. According to reports, if WWE was to get rid of that third hour of programming, they would lose approximately $25 to $30 million a year. So while a lot of wrestling fans want that third hour to be gone and often blame that third hour on why the ratings are poor, a lot has to be questioned about what can they actually do then. Because right now, the licensing deals in TV, in sports, in entertainment reign supreme. When content companies such as Netflix are paying massive amounts, billions of dollars for content to be able to load their libraries and inventory to draw in consumers, you have the WWE who produces right now on television five hours of main programming along with other shows such as Main Event, Superstars, NXT Kids they're working on, NXT, the network, so much content that has to be produced. And what part of that content is drawing money? Now, when it comes to drawing money in the WWE and the WWF and the WCW, the box office draws have been limited. Big marquee names such as Hulk Hogan, who revolutionized the wrestling industry, starting with WrestleMania 1. Guys that came along, such as Stone Cold Steve Austin, that were brash, that went against their boss, that created that common thread that you may hate your boss, and there's a lot of things you might want to do to him. That resonated with people. That was a draw. People wanted to tune in to see what Stone Cold Steve Austin would do next. Fighting the authority, fighting the man is something relatable that people get interested in. Now that same success was try to parlay into CM Punk. CM Punk lays one of the best promos to date on Raw in Las Vegas in 2011. CM Punk would go on to face John Cena in a pay-per-view that actually did pretty well in buy rates And it was rated five stars by Dave Meltzer. But during his title reign, even though he was the best wrestler in the world from 2011 to 2013, roughly, he did not draw money. While fans will often disagree about CM Punk, it is undisputed that he was absolutely the best wrestler in the company and was very, very entertaining to watch and produced some of the best matches that we can remember. But here's the problem. Being the best wrestler, as proven here, did not parlay into that success. After Money in the Bank, SummerSlam did not perform well. Throughout the rest of the year, through his title reign, which went on to span 434 days, things often became predictable, as the crowds would say. As his reign went on a year, and I still remember to this day in 2011 and 2012, making prediction videos for every single pay-per-view 
where it became very, very predictable that CM Punk was going to win. And a common thread from those videos was the title is not actually in jeopardy. WWE really hasn't given us challengers, credible threats to titles, or things that make you really believe the WWE is unpredictable and must-see television. It's kind of a constant formula in the WWE. In today's day and age, with Cena holding a belt, you know he's not going to lose. Most of the times. Until finally, Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam beat him. Daniel Bryan would go on to win the title, something everybody wanted, something that the people got behind, and then what happened? He lost the title to the authority when he was stripped from it, and it ultimately led to one of the greatest moments in history at WrestleMania 30. Unfortunately, injuries happened. Now, Daniel Bryan would win that title and would never really get that reign, so we never got to see what exactly would happen. His first pay-per-view match was against Kane. Again, not a credible threat to make Daniel Bryan seem like a guy that could draw money. That same formula I talked about John Cena, you thinking he would never lose, was the same formula that CM Punk had. Then comes Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins was booked in many, many uninspiring matches. He was booked against people that you knew he would not lose to. The intrigue was not there. And while those matches were good against some of the people in the industry, such as Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, Kane, they did not draw. Pay-per-view buy rate shrunk, mainly because of the network now, but still was not drawing money. Ratings would fluctuate based on many different factors. Now, I don't have all the attendance figures from year to year, whether a house show or a certain champion ended up getting more people. Right now, we look at tour numbers, especially on the dirt sheets, and see a Reigns tour or a Cena tour or however they name those tours and see, oh, look, that drew more than the other one. So that means Reigns can't draw. Can anybody draw in this day and age, though? We constantly look at ratings on television and think that's what it means to draw. But then when those ratings fluctuate every week, and it doesn't even matter if the show is good or bad, a lot of questions have to be answered. Now, I'm going to be making a video talking about ratings because come Memorial Day, WWE is going to be in trouble. Now, we would often put blame on John Cena, Roman Reigns, or how the show is booked without considering such factors as Game 7 of the NBA Finals after an epic Game 6 comeback. Now, the way we fluctuate television viewing habits changes on a weekly basis. I will go from wanting to watch Raw Live for no particular reason to, eh, I'll DVR it and watch it half an hour late on DVR and then fast forward through all the junk. I don't have any reasoning behind it. Some Mondays I just have stuff I'd rather do. Now, I don't do that stuff because I don't think the show is going to be good or that Roman can't draw. I do it because my interests have changed and I don't really want to sit around for a third hour. But I understand that third hour would put WWE in the red if they didn't have it. Now, there is no simple answer right now to who would be drawing the biggest money. Roman Reigns has got a match against Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Now, here's the thing. Seth Rollins returned to the WWE at Extreme Rules. He laid out Roman Reigns with a pedigree, and people instantly thought, okay, that means Seth Rollins is a face. WWE, you finally did something right, and then out comes Seth Rollins on Monday night, and what does he do? He turns a heel promo to show he's still heel, and Roman is still going to be the good guy that they're trying to get over. Now, we see this as WWE pushing it down their throats. I see it as WWE experimenting to see where it goes. Seth Rollins is a natural heel. His wrestling style is heelish. His psychology is heelish. He squirms around. He finds a way to win as champion, and that's what a heel champion, in my opinion, should do. But was money left on the table when it comes to drawing money with him not being a face? Roman Reigns doesn't have to 
be a heel other than the fact we had this guy, Seth Rollins, who is champion, who never lost the title. He returns the WWE to reclaim what is rightfully his, what he never lost, what could be a draw. But would it be a draw? We all think now because he's back, he would be the best thing for the company because we think we know best. I often pretend or think, you know, I know what I'm talking about. But in reality, I have no idea. The best thing that I heard from a podcast is people uh, from Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast that people think Vince waves a magic wand and just gets people over. That Vince McMahon turns people into superstars by a click of his finger. He just snaps them. He's over. Because of comments he's made about Cesaro not having charisma or his often lack of listening to the WWE universe, people question if... He is the one stifling the people from drawing money. And here's the thing. I don't necessarily think that Vince McMahon is the cause for WWE not drawing. Now, it is true. The writing has been terrible. There hasn't been that unpredictability. And WWE is shifting it now, and they're going to go to a brand split. They're trying out new things. Now, we can't even fill Raw oftentimes without filler. The last show with the Money in the Bank qualifiers was the first show in a long time that I said, okay, it's the opposite of how it's been. The matches weren't as excellent as previous weeks, but those matches always had nothing on the line. Versus the Money in the Bank qualifiers had something on the line, but the matches may not have been good, but the filler on the show was very limited. Now, you see two guys in the ring right now, The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. You could relate to them. The Rock was absolutely hilarious. His charisma oozed everywhere. Stone Cold Steve Austin went against the authority. You got interested in him. If you look at some of the biggest champions of all time, such as Bret Hart, Bret Hart didn't draw money. Bret Hart as champion went down, down, and down in pay-per-view buys. Diesel, one of our fan favorites when he comes back, we love him. Because of NWO. Because of the Outsiders. But as champion, he didn't draw. Drawing money is not easy. Being the guy is not easy. There has been many that have failed before Roman Reigns that people loved. Superstars that, while you enjoyed, while you think were great, they just didn't draw money. And Roman Reigns is in that category. Everybody is blaming Roman for WWE not drawing huge crowds, even though they are drawing huge crowds. Record levels at WrestleMania. Now, some people say that's not Roman. That's just WrestleMania, which is true. The spectacle of WrestleMania is there, and people want to see it. They want to be a part of it, and that does not equate to drawing money, and I would agree with that. Roman Reigns headlining the biggest WrestleMania of all time, attendance-wise, doesn't mean Roman can draw money. It just means the spectacular of WrestleMania is that grand. Now, I don't have all the answers for who can draw money, how they can draw money, but if you look at the history, the best wrestlers in the world did not draw. Well, Daniel Bryan was one of our favorites. The pay-per-views often slipped. The TV ratings never went up sky high like everybody assumed they would, even though he was our guy. He was our fan favorite. So when it comes to drawing money, there is no easy answer. There's no one-click solution for what's going to solve the WWE's problems. But I would love to know, guys, even though a lot of us have been wrong in the past, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Bret Hart, what could WWE do to draw money? Is it superstars? Is it charisma? Is it personality? Or in this day and age, as things changed and ratings are going to fluctuate and drawing isn't just on one person anymore. It's on the whole company firing as a whole and pushing the network out to everybody. Is that where the draw is? Until next time, it's Tubby Emu.